This video will teach you how to save images from Canva. When you have created a design and wish to save it in your computer, you can just simply click on the download button on the top right corner of your screen. Choose your preferred file type that you wish to save the image as. For example, I'll choose JPEG. Then simply click Download. So your design is saved as an image onto your computer as you can see. Or you can also choose to post it or share it anywhere else you want. This video will teach you how to use Canva to create your own design. Here in Canva, you can design for all sorts of platforms, for example, for social media, presentation, poster, Facebook posts, blog graphics, and more. For this example video, I'll show you how to create your own customized presentation design. So let's click on Presentation. The first thing you'll see is the Layout tab on the right-hand side. Canva provides you an array of layouts you can use to start with. Click on any one that you like and you can start working with it or get some inspiration to design one of your own. Here I'm just going to click on this one that I like. and it will appear here at your design sheet. Under the Search tab is where Canva Image Library is located. There's more than one million images ready for you to use. There are a lot of popular collections here that you can use. For example, lines, banners, grids, text holders, and more. Just type in the search box if there's a specific image you're looking for. Let's say flower. Images of flowers will appear and you can pick any one that you like and drag it into your design sheet. Next up is your text tab. You can add any text into your design or you can use the ones provided by Canva over here. Click on Add Heading and you can key in any text that you want and place it anywhere that you wish. If you click on Background, you can choose to add a solid color or a patterned background. You can even use a stock photo if you want to. For example, I'll click on this pattern and my design background will turn into the pattern as you can see. The last tab is for your own uploads. You can upload your own image files by clicking Upload Your Own Images or directly drag and drop the file onto your design sheet. You can also upload images from your Facebook by clicking on this Facebook button. When you're done with your design, you can click on Share and Publish at the top right corner. There'll be a link provided over here where you can share the link to your design to anyone, and those with Canva accounts can even open and also edit the design if they want. Or you can publish your design as an image file or publish it on any social media you wish to share on.
This is how you can use Canva to create your own design and share it anywhere with anyone you want. This video tutorial will teach you how to create a Canva account. Just go to www.canva.com. And here on the main page, you can choose to sign up using your Facebook account, or your Google account, or simply sign up with your email address. For this video, I will go with email. First of all, key in your full name. Then key in your email address. And then your password. Simply click on Sign Up. You can choose to use Canva for your work, personal, or educational purposes. For this video example, I'm just going to go for personal. Then you'll be signed up to your Canva page and there you go, your Canva account is created. Hi there, in this section I'll show you how to create a page from scratch and also add elements into your page. So we start off with a blank page and the only option that there is, is to add new sections. So let's go ahead and click on add new section. And then you'll be brought into an option to add new row. Now notice when I hover my mouse it says here section so let's click on add new row and you can add one column blocks, two, three, four up to six column blocks, also a left sidebar column and a right sidebar column. Let's click on one column block and then give your element a name and then click add to page. So now a new row has been added. The first section is this section here, and then the next one is the headline row, and because we want to create a headline, click on New Element. And in the Add in Element, you have a lot more options. You can put in a headline, timer, date, countdown, price table, progress bar, and even a survey. Because this is a headline, let's click on Headline, give the element a name, Headline, and then click Add to Page. So there you have it, a very simple brand new headline to edit. Double click on the headline, highlight the headline and you can start typing in your headline. Your awesome converting headline here. And let's go ahead and customize it further. In this headline you can bold it, italicize it, underline it, justify left, center or right and also insert a link. To insert a link, just highlight the whole text and click on this button here. So to further customize, click on the gear button on the top right and you've come up with a pop-up. You could also add margins. Let's put a margin of 30 and a padding of 50 and change the text color to blue. And we can also change the background color. Let's change it to black. And if you go further down, you can change the font size, the height, Corner, let's put to 10 pixels. Let's set the padding at 25. 20. And then click go back and that's it. This is your awesome converting headline here. So let's say I want to add in more elements. Things like video, a countdown timer, a progress bar. So let me show you how to do that. So over here, click on the bottom here. So you want to add a new section and then before you proceed further, click on the settings by clicking on the gear icon here. And you want to get it as close to the headline. So the padding on the top, make it to zero. Padding on the bottom, make it to zero. And the width, make it to small. Sorry, let's make it to medium and then you can add a new row. Let's say we want to add text and a video. I'm going to choose a two column block. Don't forget to give it a name. Click Add to Page. After that, click Add New Element. And over here on the search bar, say I want a video. So add a video player. Remember to name the element so you can easily organize it. So click Add to Page. So if I have a link, just click on the video and it will come up as a pop-up. You can rename the element and you can also choose the video type whereby it's a custom embedded or a YouTube video Wista or HTML5 video. 
You could also play with the width and the skin, and over here I want to add a new text to explain about what the video is. You can click on Add New Element, click on the text block, click Add to Page, and you have a dummy text here. So let's say I want to add a countdown timer. So I can click on the button, and then I can search for countdown, and I have three different countdowns. We have a date, a timer, or a daily evergreen. So let's put in a timer, click Add to Page, and I can even customize the timer. Click on the timer, and I can put in the hours, minutes, and seconds, and when the countdown timer is expired, that's the action it will trigger. So in this case, I could redirect to URL or show Hide Elements. And there's also a revisit action, so it could be an auto reset timer, auto expire for X days, or hide the timer and show section or row. So in this example, 30 minutes is fine, and let's say I want to add in a progress bar as well. So I click on the plus sign, and you can search for a progress bar. Select the progress bar and click Add to Page, and then I have a progress bar here. At any point, if you'd like to change the location, or just hover my mouse on it, and then click Hold, and I can drag left, right, or anywhere and just place it. I could also put the progress bar on the top here. I could put the countdown timer here. I could put this back here. And then I would want them to take an action after that. So what I can do is click on the plug-in sign and let's say I want to add a button and then have a button. So to customize the button just click on the gear icon and here is the text, the subtext, the bottom action when it's clicked, the URL action, the target, the text color, the background color, the font size. We can make it bigger and if we scroll down there it will be different styles for the bottom. We can have a subtle style for the button, a square button, a rounded button, or a pill button. So let's select a rounded button. Even the button width I could put it to fluid so I could align the button center. We could even put an icon, let's say a right arrow download now. And there's a lot more customization. If you want the background to be colored, you want to have more design, that's also fine, and there you have it. This is a very simple page built from scratch, and all you need to do is keep trying, adding in more sections, different columns, different rows, and experiment with the different elements, and always see the settings that are available for you to customize. Good luck! And your next option is that you could choose to either show in search engine for this page, or you can hide it. You can also save this page as a template so that you can reload it to your future funnels and use it as a template for your page. In the next section is email integration. Just click on this button over here for email integration and you can do an integration for any autoresponder that you're currently using. Your next customization is the sections button and it is a number three. So what you can do here is that when you hover your mouse on the section, it will get highlighted. So for example, if you put your mouse over the main headline, it will tell you that this is the main headline, followed by this is the opt-in area, and this is the footer. You have a couple of options for each of these sections. One is that you can click on this and you can reorder the section so you just press and hold it, and you can drag and drop the order on it. You can also hide, so if you hide, the section itself will be hidden from view. You can also clone this section, and everything inside the section will be cloned, and you can also delete the section itself. What I would recommend is if you're not using a section, just hide it. This is because ClickFunnels does not have an undo button, so when you have a section, all your hard work might be lost with just one click. So what is recommended is that instead of deleting, just try and hide the section from view. In the next part is the rows. The rows are the same as the section as well as in terms of options. So if you hover your mouse over the rows, you can see which one is being indicated, and you can also change the order by this button here. You can hide the row, you can duplicate, or you can delete the row. Next up for columns, it will also show, and the main headline in the first column is this full column, and you can choose to hide it or unhide it. And next are the elements, and these are the list of elements that are on this page. So there's the free headline, the main headline, the subtext, the name form, and also the email form, opt-in button, span text, and the footer text. 
The whole list is here and you can also reorder it. You can also save the template. You can preview the template. But of course, as a reminder, please save your template first before you preview it and you can also exit. So let's take a look at the more detailed functions that you can customize in sections. So in the section tabs, click on any of the section, for example, let's click on main headline. And then you would have much more options from here to customize your main headline section. Your main headline section, the one that I'm referring, is this one. Get yours free. You can rename this section itself. This is the section ID. You can also do the visibility settings to show either on all devices, desktop only, or mobile only. You can also choose the width, whether it's extra, small, full page, or wide, medium, or small. You can also change the background color. You can also put a background image in. You can position the background image. And you can also make this section itself whether or not you want to make it sticky or not sticky. What it means by sticky is that, let's say it's a very long page and as you scroll down, that section will follow the browser wherever your scroll is. So if you select the option of stick on top of scroll, it will stick on the top. If you choose stick to the bottom, it will stick to the bottom. So next up, you can also put in the padding. Padding is the space in between the text and the top line. So for example, you can put the top to be bigger and it will appear over here. You can put it on the bottom, left or right. You can also put it in the margin in the pixels. And this will either put it on the top or the bottom. So let's put it back to 130. So for this section you can also put in the radius and this radius is at 10 pixels. Radius is a rounded corner and you can select whether you want the rounded corner to be on the top, bottom or all around. You can also customize your borders and your borders can then either be put on the bottom, full border, top border or top and bottom border. You can also determine the style. The style right now is solid. You can also put it in as a dashboard or dotted. You can also put it in the size of the border. Right now it is at 5 pixels and you can go all the way up to 10. And you can also customize the color of the border. You can also put a drop shadow on the section itself. Currently, it's at 30% drop shadow. Your options are to set up all the way to either a drop shadow or an inner shadow and up to 40%. The rest of these options over here are a time delay and it will stay hidden until it is triggered for this section itself and you can put a time style delay or fade in or fade in with scale. You can also put in the minutes before it fades in and even up to the seconds. The next is more advanced fade in and customization for the headline section. Up next will be the rows. Now rows, if you put, if we just select one row itself, the setting is almost the same as the section, though not as extensive as the section. It's also customizable and you can put in the background, color, background image, background image position, padding margin, and also corners. Under the Elements tab, you can further customize the elements that are present in the page. So for example, let's click on the headline, and when you click on the headline, you can customize, you can rename it, you can also put margins, change the text color, change the bold color, change the background color, you could align it, center, left, or right, change the font size, and if you scroll down some more, there's also different Google fonts that you can use. You can change the line height, the text transform, letter spacing, and basically a whole lot of other customization which you just need to scroll down and see which one is relevant. Other element, let's say the placeholder for name, email, opt-in button. And under opt-in button, we can change the text, the subtext. You can also change the button action and the URL action, the background color, the font size, style theme, and a lot more. Hi there, in this video I'll show you how to manually add your digital asset to your download page. So if you're on the main dashboard of your ClickFunnels account, click on the thank you page which is where you want your download to happen and then go ahead scroll down and then click on edit page. And then you're brought to your thank you download page and what you want to do is that you want to manually attach the download link to the download button which is in blue. 
So your next step is to get your mouse over to the download button and then you'll see a gear on the top. Click on it and once you click on it a pop-up will come up with all the settings that you can do to customize this download button. So what you're looking for is the URL action where you want to put in your download link. So for example you can just put in the link. I already have my download link and this is the link that was provided by ClickFunnels when I uploaded my digital asset into ClickFunnels. And do bear in mind that your maximum file size is only 3 megabytes and if it is anything larger than 3 megabytes, you need to host your file on another file hosting website such as Dropbox or Google Drive or other file hosting website. So once you have put the link in, all you need to do is press save and you're done. There you have it, your download link manually attached to your download button. Thank you. Hi there, in this video I'll show you how to upload your digital assets. What's a digital asset? It's a digital ebook or free report or any digital files that you have in digital format that's used as a lead magnet for a downloadable content to your visitors in exchange for their emails or their details. So on the main navigation what you want to do is click on account and then select digital assets. And then you'll be taken to this page where you can either search for digital assets or add a new asset. For this example, you can see that I've already uploaded a digital product. So let me show you how to upload it. It's very simple. All you need to do is click on this button, Add New Asset, and then you'll be taken to this pop-up page where you can name the asset and then select the file and do note that there is a maximum of 3 megabytes and you can put in the name where it is sending from and also the email, from which email and the message. What's preloaded is already there and it says, here's the free PDF you requested. Now you can customize it by typing the message that you want. Once you're done, you just need to click on this button, create digital asset and it will automatically upload and fill up the list over here. It's important to note that the maximum file size that you can upload is 3 megabytes and anything bigger then you would have need to host it on a third party file hosting website like Dropbox or Google Drive or other file hosting websites and then after that you have to manually attach it on the download page. So there you have it, this is a video on uploading your digital assets. Hi there, in this video I'll show you how to select and add templates. It's very, very easy and before we begin, let's understand an overview of the funnel that we've just set up. So this is an opt-in funnel and it has a two-step funnel over here. On the left is the first step, which is an opt-in page followed by a thank you page. And this icon down below is an icon that indicates that there's no template selected and therefore that this is the icon. Once a template is selected, this icon will not appear anymore. You can select your templates from a list of templates and there are a lot of choices. Let's scroll down and see all the choices available for us to select for an opt-in. So that's quite a lot of templates and what happens is that ClickFunnels will periodically update and add new templates from time to time. All the templates are categorized into different categories. All the categories are available on the top here which is the opt-in category, sales category, webinar, auto webinar, membership, click pop, and miscellaneous. It's important to note that different categories have different functions and objectives and different types. So under the opt-in there are two types which the email opt-in template and a thank you template. Under sales you would have a sales page template, product launch, order form, one click upsell, one click downsell, and order confirmation. It's important to note that for certain templates, the elements are unique to the template itself, so in this case, the order form has a unique element to capture and accept credit card information. What this means is that when you select a template, it needs to be the same as the objectives that you have planned out and also the page type. So under Webinar, there is the registration, thank you, and broadcast form. Under Auto Webinar, there is registration. Then you can replay room. Under membership there are two types, member access and membership area. Under click pop these are the list of your click pop templates and under miscellaneous these are your miscellaneous templates. 
You can also search for templates if you know exactly what you want or the type of templates you're looking for. So if you have one click over here, it'll show you suggestions. For example, if you're looking for a two-step, a video template, a squeeze template, thank you template, dark colored template, light, blue, green, red, testimonial based or minimalistic template. You can also show your own templates that you made and sort by top converting templates. What this means is that when you click this option, you will sort the list of templates available in that category and sort it by the top converting as tested and proven by ClickFunnels. In this example, because I'm doing an opt-in funnel, and it is a two-step funnel, so my first funnel step is an opt-in, so we go under the category of opt-in and select email opt-in. And what we're going to do next is sort by top converting. And when I do this, ClickFunnels recommends these top three as the top converting templates, which are the dark opt-in box, the big blur opt-in, the wood two-step opt-in. So for this example, let's select a dark opt-in box. And before you select a template, you can either preview it or if you like the template, just click Select Template. And there you have it. It's pretty easy and ClickFunnels has automatically added and loaded the template. You will notice that under the opt-in here, the icon that says that there is no template is gone. And if you scroll down, you'll be able to edit the template. You can also preview the page split test if you're doing split test and edit the page split test settings. So there you go, a very easy video on how to select and add templates into your ClickFunnels page. Hi there, in this video I'll go through with you the funnel interface dashboard that you have whenever you add a new funnel or add a new template in your funnel. So on the top here, this navigation, this blue bar over here, you can see your funnel URL and you can copy the URL and also you can visit the link in another new page. You also have the funnel contacts and also the funnel settings. Now in your funnel, it is preloaded with the funnel steps and in this case for an opt-in funnel, it's a two-step funnel, which is an opt-in and a thank you. Also notice that under your opt-in there is no icon, which means that this step already has a template selected. A funnel step which does not have a template has this icon over here. So on top is the funnel name and at the bottom is the funnel type and in this case this is the opt-in and this is the thank you page. And the funnel steps flow from top to bottom. You can also add a new step if you click this button. You can also add a new funnel step, change the name and choose whether you want to show it in the funnel or not. You can also select a custom domain and a custom path. In your funnel step you can also change the order of the steps. So for example, I would want this step to appear after the thank you page, then I can just drag it and drop it over here. There will be a pop-up saying changing the funnel order will reset the funnel stats and it won't make sense anymore. For this example, I just want to show you that you can drag the steps around, so I'm going to click OK. Now it's important to note that the steps of your funnel order need to make sense, otherwise it won't work and you won't get the results you want. So in this case, it doesn't make sense for you to have a thank you page before you have an opt-in page. So let's drag it back to the top and click OK. And now it makes sense where your visitors will give you their email name and exchange for a download and then after they are sent, the thank you page comes up. The main tab on the top, there are three tabs. One is the overview, automation, and publishing. In the overview, you can see the main stats, which are your visitors, number of contacts, and your contacts conversion rate. Under automation, you can set new actions, whereby you can set a new email or a new SMS whenever there is a new engagement on your opt-in page. So for example, if you click on add new email, assuming that you've set up your SMTP configuration correctly, you'll be able to access this option and you can send an email whenever the download happens or whenever your visitors have provided their name and email address, they'll receive an email on their downloadable content. So in this example, you can put in your name, the subject, and also select the SMTP configuration, which is from an autoresponder, and also set the condition, which is when to trigger the sending of the email. And under this section here, under HTML body, is the email that you can type in. So for example, it would be, 
Hey there, thank you for signing up. Here is your ebook. And once you're done customizing this with images and text and also the formatting, you just click on Create Email. In publishing, you can rename the funnel step name, select the domain, and also rename the path. You can also get click pop code, get click opt in link, put a WordPress plugin, connect the opt in page to Facebook, download the HTML, and host it anywhere else and also embed a code. Once you're done and all of this configuration, and when you are satisfied, you can just click Update Funnel Step. In this section here is your opt-in URL. Your opt-in URL is different from the main URL because this would enable split testing. When you use split testing, you can review the stats from the last 7 days, last 30 days, last 2 months, this year, or all the time. And if you go further down, you will see the main control where you have a preview of the template that you have chosen with a stat summary of your visitors, conversion, and contacts and you can also do a split test. Split testing is where you want to test out certain stuff like different headlines, different images, or offers. This is the option where you can do the split testing up to two split tests. So if you want to do a split test, just click on Create Variation, and then you can select Duplicate from Opt-in, exactly as how you created it, and just change the headline, or you can create from an entirely new template. In this section here, you can also click on Edit Page on your template. You can preview the split test version, and if you click this gear, you can also edit page settings. In this pop-up, you can name the page, you can select the domain, and you can also rename the path. Once you are satisfied with the customization and you are done, you can click on Update Page. If you would like to select a new template, you can always click on this button, Delete Page Variation and what it does is that it deletes the page and you are then able to select a new template. Do note that when you select this option, all your changes and the work that you have done customizing the template would be lost. If you scroll further down, you have three more options. The first one is you can delete the funnel step or you can also clone the funnel step, so depending on what you've planned out for your sales funnel or the funnel that you have created, these are your two options, either to delete or to clone the funnel step. You can also remove from funnel and that means that this page or this funnel will be removed from the whole funnel order and it will be placed below the funnel order. And there you have it. This is the overview of the funnel dashboard and interface that we have whenever you have added a template or you have created a sales funnel. Hi there, in this video you'll learn how to add a new funnel, and it's very, very easy. For every new funnel creation, you could either create it from on top of your navigation bar, all you need to do is to hover your mouse on funnels, and you have the option of creating a new funnel. Alternatively, you can also add a new funnel from the main dashboard that you are in by clicking on this button, Add New Funnel. So let's click on it and you'll be brought into an option where again before you create any funnel please plan out your funnel and understand what your goals and objectives are and when you've done your planning all you need to do is click on either collect emails sell your product or host a webinar in this example let's click on collect emails you'll be brought into a new section where you can choose the type and under collect emails there's only one type and an explanation it's a two-step funnel where you have a landing page and a thank you download page. In this step, what you want to do is give your funnel a name, and in this example, let's call it Demo. And you can also select a group tag. A group tag is how you want to organize your funnels. In this example, let's put it as a demo. Once you're done and satisfied with the name and also group tag, the next step is to click on Build Funnel. And when that happens, next is that ClickFunnels will bring you to the customization page where you can start to customize your funnel and add a template. And there you have it, a very simple how to add a new funnel to your ClickFunnels account. Hi there, in this video I'll be introducing you to the different types of funnels that you can create in ClickFunnels. This video is created with the assumption that you have already planned out what kind of funnels that you want to create and the objective and you have some familiarity with funnels. 
So all your funnels can be accessed through on the top here whereby you can create a new funnel or for easier access just click on this button, Add New Funnel. And when you click on Add New Funnel, it's a three-step process where first you've got to choose your goal, then you choose the type, then you build the funnel. Under Goals, there are three goals. You could either collect emails, sell your product, or host a webinar, or if you know exactly what kind of funnel that you want to create, or you have an existing funnel that you have seen online or you want to model your competitors, just click on this button, Create a Custom Funnel. So under Collect Emails, it's a two-step funnel, and a two-step funnel, you can read more about it on the right-hand side, the right section over here. The first two steps are Email Landing Page and a Thank You Download Page. Email Landing Page is also known as a Squeeze Page or an Opt-in Page. And there is a short sentence explaining about what this funnel is all about. You could also watch the explainer video for more information. So let's go back. And in Sell Your Product, there's a Sales Funnel, Product Launch, and if you want to create a membership site, you can also create it over here. Sales Funnel sells your product after collecting leads on your squeeze page. And a product launch is a series of videos that leads towards your product launch. It can be an ebook, a program, or a video module. A membership site is more unique whereby it is members only access, and you can also do that through ClickFunnels. Let's go on to the next goal, which is host a webinar. In hosting a webinar, you have two types. One is a live webinar, and the next one is a webinar replay. In live webinar, you can sell your products after collecting your leads with a squeeze page. In a webinar replay, let's say you've done a training program or a live webinar where the results are really awesome. Really great, your attendees to the webinar are very responsive, and if you are doing personal development, there are some breakthroughs and you don't want to spend time and time doing the same thing over and over again or having the same webinar over and over again. So what you can do is the training once. You do the live webinar once and then you choose this funnel and you showcase the reply of the webinar for an evergreen lead generation. And there you have it, an introduction and overview of the funnels that are offered by ClickFunnels. And don't forget, you can also create your custom funnel by clicking on this button. Just a recap. First, you have to understand what your goals are, understand what kind of funnels that you want to create, and then click on Add New Funnel. And you can click on the goal that you want, which is either collect emails, sell your product, or host a webinar. Hi there, in this video, I'll give you an overview of the ClickFunnels navigation dashboard. Just like any other software that you get or learn, do not be overwhelmed. Just relax and if you chunk it down section by section, it'll be much easier to digest. Now before we begin, allow me to introduce you to the plan that I'm on. I'm on the startup plan, which is $97 US a month after a 14-day trial and it has its own limitations, which is 20,000 visits, 100 pages, and 20 funnels. Now let's first check on the navigation on top. Over here we have ClickFunnels whereby when you click it, it will bring you back to the main page. You have Funnels, Actionetics, Backpack, Account, and Help. Your main navigation button that you would normally press is Funnels. And under Funnels, you can browse the funnels that you have, browse the contacts, and sales, and, and also you can add new funnels. If you have upgraded to the next plan, which is 297 US dollars a month, you'll be able to access Actionetics and Backpack. In this video, we're only covering the startup plan, which is the basic starter plan. Over here, you have the search bar where you can search for your funnels, and it's all categorized in sales, opt in, webinar, membership, auto webinar, webinar reply, and product launch. You can type in anything over here and let's say demo and you can check it out. The button over here is add new funnel. You can start creating your funnels by clicking on this button. In the section below you have three tabs. One is show all funnels, archive and marketplace. Show all funnels are the funnels that you have created that is available is added here. And as you can see all the funnels are under legacy and this is the pre-built funnels that are already loaded in the ClickFunnels when you first join. 
In the funnels, you can see the last update and also how many steps there are in this funnel. So for example, in Best Selling Book Funnel has three steps and you can also click to edit and customize it. Under the Archive tab, if you click on it, are all the funnels that you have created but are not using anymore. So what happens is that when you delete a funnel, it becomes archived and it doesn't really get deleted. It just gets archived. At any point of time, you can always click on Restore and then you can read it again. And in the next tab, Marketplace, are funnels that are purchased in the Marketplace. And if there are any funnels that are purchased in the Marketplace, it'll show up here. Now going further down this section, you can also watch the advanced training of Funnel Hacks by watching the webinar. And if you have purchased the advanced funnel training, the access will be available here. Now everything else below here is the ClickFunnels social media links. Normally it wouldn't really focus on it except for the ClickFunnels blog where if there is any research or updates on things that I want to read, then I'll click on it. Further down below are the ClickFunnels social media icons and social media links. This icon over here is the help icon and if you click on it you can always use it to engage with anyone from ClickFunnels if you face any problems. And there you have it, an overview of all the essentials of everything you need to know about the ClickFunnels Navigation Dashboard. Hi there, in this video I'll show you how to set up your ClickFunnels account. So you are brought into this main navigation dashboard and to set up your account just drag your mouse over the navigation bar on top and select account. And now you're brought into the main navigation on your account settings in ClickFunnels. What's important is you go through each section line by line and see what you need to fill in so that the services by ClickFunnels is not disrupted. Under Account Billing, of course, do input in your credit card details, and in this, so that all the pages that you have built, the visitor and contacts, and the funnels that you have set up, is not disrupted after your 14-day trial period. So do set up your account billing. Under Personal Page Templates, you can see the page templates that you have built. Also under this tab, Email Templates, is the list of the email templates that you have customized, and built ready for you to email out. Digital assets are the ebooks and the digital products that you have uploaded that you want ClickFunnels to host. Under digital assets, for example purposes, I've uploaded a demo product and I'll show you in another video how to upload this. It's also important for your integrations to work and all you need to do to set up your integrations is to click on this button, Add New Integration and it's a step-by-step -step process where it'll show you and guide you on how to integrate your emails or your autoresponders. For this example, I've already integrated MailChimp and I'll show you, just click on this button. You can put a name and I just want to show you a list of services that integrates well with ClickFunnels. From Actionetics, Aweber, Infusionsoft, Kajabi, MailChimp, Sendlane, right up to SendDirect. Scroll down further, you can also integrate your payment gateways. Payment gateways range from Stripe to JVZoo to ClickBank. Outgoing SMTP is your emails that are integrated with the autoresponder itself, and you can also customize your custom domains and add in managers. To recap, what's important in this area are your account billing that you need to put in your credit card details your digital assets where you can upload digital products, 
your integrations, payment gateways, outgoing SMTP, and your custom domains. And there you have it. This is the ClickFunnels account overview. In this video, I'll show you how you can add an audio track inside your project on Explaindio 3.0. There are basically two ways to do this. And the first way is by using this option, which is Add Scene Audio. And here you can add any MP3 track into your scene. I'll use this file here, so you can see here this scene has an audio track assigned to it. So if you want to put a music or voiceover track for this scene only, you can use this option. The next way to add an audio track is by using this option, the audio button. Here you have two options, that is to add voice or music. If I choose to add music, I can choose my own MP3 track, which I can browse in my PC or also use the MP3 tracks that Explaindio has provided. If I want to use my own track, I just click Browse to select one or use Explaindio's stock tracks. This option sets the volume of the track you're using and this button for the track's fade effect. If you want to reset the track, click this button and it resets everything. Here you can get more tracks. So if you want to insert a voice or music track, you can do this here. So now I'll insert a music track. Now if you're satisfied with your settings here, you can straight away click this close button here. And now your project has a music track playing along when you export your project into a video. So that's it. That's how you add an audio track inside your project on Explaindio 3.0. In this video, I'm going to show you how to render video in Explaindio 3.0. This is where you want to export the slides that you've created into a video. As you can see, I have created three slides as a sample. What you want to do is click this button, which is Create Video. And here you see the Export Project window pops up. This is to set the export path and file name. This is the option to set the video size, and there are a few options here. I'll leave it as it is. This is the video quality. I'll also leave this, and this is the export quality. I'll leave these settings as default. After you've set everything and you want to export the project for online presenter, check this box and if you want to set a watermark for this video, you can check this box here. If you're satisfied with your settings, you can click the Start Export button and you'll be prompted to the location where you'll save your video. I'll go ahead and save this at desktop. Now the video export's complete. So now you can open the video folder and view the video that you've exported. Which is this one. As you can see, the slides I've created have become an MP4 video. So there you have it. That's how you render video in Explaindio 3.0. In this video, I'm going to show you how to edit your slides on Explaindio 3.0. In the previous video, I've already covered how to add a slide. I'm going to pause this slide here because I want to go into the options on the left-hand side here. This part is the scene option where you can add a sketch scene panel, export a scene, and open your canvas. Here you can upload a background image for your scene. You can use Explaindio Gallery or browse for your own. I'll use this image. As you can see, the background appears. So if you want to remove the background, click this button here. This is the option to add a background video, an option to add a GIF background, and also scene voiceover. This part is the action of the scene in which you can select animations after the scene is ended. 
The next option is the SWF option in which you can edit the animated character here, how it behaves and how it looks. You can flip the character vertically and as you can see the character is now upside down. If you click it again the character returns to normal. You can also flip the character horizontally. And you can also change the position of the scene. Clicking this opens the canvas. I'll close it. This part is to set how long the scene plays. Right now it's set at 129 frames, which is about nearly 7 seconds. Here are also options to pause at certain points of the frame, if you want, and this is the option to pause or play nested animations. This is the critical part I want to focus, which is customizing the animation. Here you can also add background images from Explainedio's gallery. You can browse for it and you can remove it. Now I'll click Customize Animation. Here you can edit the text and as you can see the text is here. You can edit it. As you can see, text has been edited and you can also set the font, font size, horizontal alignment, vertical alignment, font effects, and also the font styles. This is for the text color. If you want to change the color, you can do that here. And as you can see, color is changed. This option here is for the word wrap, and here you can set the offset of the text. The x-axis is for the left and right movement, and the y-axis is for the vertical movement. The next part is the image option, where you can add a background image. You can browse for an image, and as an example I'm going to use this one. Now the image has become the background. You can also choose an image from Explainedio's gallery. This button is to remove the image. If you add an image, you can edit the size of the image and its location and also to keep its proportions. Next up is the video options. This part is to add a video into the video area 1. I'll demonstrate that now and select this video. And as you can see, video area 1 is actually the background of the slide if you play this slide. You can see the background video playing also. There are also options to add audio from the video to browse and to get more videos from Explainedio. And here again is to set the sizing and positioning of the video. The next part is the animation of the slide. As you can see there are a few animation options to choose from. And there are two animation slots that you can use. The next part is to customize the outline of the slide. So I'll pause the video right here and check the outline. Outline 1 is usually for the slide's background. If you uncheck Outline Area 1, the background will disappear. Outline 2 is for this box, and here you can change the color of the box and the box color on the slide will change. This is also the same with Outline Area 3. The next part is the effects part. This is mainly for sketch scenes where you can edit sketch line color of the sketch item. Here is the hand tilt setting and this is to set the hand for your sketch scenes. There are a selection of hands you can use and also a button to add animated or custom pens. This is to flip the hand horizontally. The draw hand under sketch option is used for a certain type of hand. And the hand that is used is this one. That's how you edit slide animation on Explainedio 3.0.
In this video, I'm going to show you how to add slides on Explaindio 3.0. The first thing to do is to create a project. I'll give this a name and click Create. The next step is to add a scene by clicking this button on the top left. Here, you can select a new scene or add saved scenes from your own library. Click Create New Scene. You are now here. The next step is to add elements in your scene. You can add a 3D object, animation or slide, video, GIF, bitmap image, sketch image, and text. This is the option to close the canvas. I'll add an animation or slide. You can select either Explaindio slide or flash animation. I'll choose Explaindio slide, and I'll choose this one. After you've chosen, you can click Add Single, and next click Add. Now it's been added into the scene. You can also add extra elements, for example, if you want to add text. Then you can click Add Text, and a text box appears. If you want to delete this text box, you can use the layers here. If you want to delete, simply click the Delete button here. If you're satisfied with your scene, close Canvas and you can now view the scene you've created here. So let's preview this slide. And this is the slide that I have created. There you have it, how to add a slide on Explaindio 3.0. Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to save your recording to MP4. Open the Recording Manager where it can be accessed by clicking Practice or Start Mode. A small tab appears at the side of your screen. Under the Screen Saver, click on the blue Setting button. A pop-up will show. And all you need to do is click on the Convert Recording Now button. Under Recordings, you need to convert. Any converted files will be listed. Use the checkboxes to select the files that you wish to convert. Choose MP4 format. And click Convert Recording. Once the file has been successfully converted, it will be moved to the Converted Recordings list in the Recording Manager. You can click the folder icon to automatically open the folder on your computer in which the converted file is stored. Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create your webinar event. Log into your account. On the My Webinar page, scroll to the webinar you want to start and click the Edit button. And here you will see the field to edit. Fill in your webinar details. The title, descriptions, date and time, and webinar language. After you're done with all your details, click on the Start button. If prompted, click Yes or Grant to accept the new webinar download. Hi, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add Panelist and Co-Organizer in GoToWebinar. Log into your account online. Either schedule a new or open an existing webinar. On the Manage Webinar page, click Edit next to Co-Organizers, then click Add Organizer. Enter the name and email address of the desired individual, then click Add Another Organizer to add additional people if needed. It's the same going to a panelist. Click on the Edit button beside Panelist and enter the name and email and then click on the Save button. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to add timed pop-up lead box in your blog post. Lead Pages has a functionality called Lead Boxes. 
where you can capture mailing lists in your existing website, such as your blog post. You now have the ability to enable pop-up lead boxes and capture more leads. The pop-up lead box appears in the website without user's action. To begin, I'll click on lead boxes, select create new lead box, then integrate my email service provider to my lead box. Very quickly, I'm going to customize the form by deleting the phone number from the form field and changing the product image. Click OK. To connect the email service provider to the lead box, click on Integrating Settings, select A Weber from the drop down menu. The visitors who opt in through the lead box will be assigned to my list called Blog Subscribers. Click Customize from this form and save changes. When you go to publish this lead box, you'll see the new publishing window where you have the option to publish this as a standard lead box, a pop-up lead box, and an exit lead box. Let's take a look at the pop-up lead box. There are three settings that you can control here. The first is the amount of time before the lead box appears. So if we were on a page that we've set a lead box to appear on after five seconds, you'll see the lead box pop up on the page after five seconds. Secondly, you can also specify how many page views before it appears. So let's say you have this lead box on a blog. Someone will need to read, for example, three articles before it appears. Thirdly, you can suppress this for the number of days so that users don't have to see it again every time when they come back to the site. If you set it to 10 days, the pop-up lead box will only appear to the same visitor 10 days later, so it will be less annoying. When you change the settings here, the HTML code will be automatically generated. There are two ways to integrate the pop-up lead box in your WordPress blog. One is the HTML code that you can copy and paste into your template, and another way is to integrate it using WordPress plugin. Once you are happy with the settings of your lead box, click Save. Here's how to publish your lead box code. Copy the HTML code. Then log into your WordPress. Go to your WordPress, click Add New Post, name your new post Test. Paste the HTML code in the new post. Be sure to switch over to the text editor, which will allow you to paste in HTML. You can now preview the changes. The pop-up lead box will appear after five seconds. The second way to publish the pop-up lead box using the WordPress plugin. Click on Get WordPress Plugin. Download the customized plugin that has your lead page's user ID into it. Let's go to our WordPress site and see how we integrate this plugin. Go to Plugin. Go to Add New, upload the plugin, choose the zip file in your computer, click Install it. Apparently, I have uploaded the plugin before. If you haven't done so, you need to activate it. There will be two new features on your dashboard one is the lead pages, and another is the lead boxes. Lead boxes is the one that we are interested in. Choose your lead box from the drop down menu. You can choose to show lead box on either every WordPress page, which is what we want, or only show on blog post. You can see the settings of your lead box right over here. Once you're happy with the settings, click Save Changes. Now let's go to the blog post and see how the pop-up lead box works. There you go, it's working exactly as I expected. That's all there is to it. You can now collect opt-ins and grow your audience. How to add a lead box to your blog post. Lead Pages has a functionality called Lead Boxes where you can capture mailing lists in your existing website such as your blog post. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to add a lead box in your blog post. To begin, I'll click on Lead Boxes and then select Create a new lead box. Very quickly, I'm going to customize the form by changing the product image and deleting phone numbers from the form field. Then give the lead box a name. I'm going to call it Lead Box Demo. Moving on, I'm going to integrate the lead box with my email service provider. I select A Weber from the drop down list and use the Whoever opt in will go into my list called Blog Subscribers. Then click on Customize this form and then I'll save it. When we go to publish this lead box, you'll see the new publishing window where you have the option to publish this as a standard lead box, a pop-up lead box, 
and an exit lead box. Let's take a look at the standard lead box. You can configure the lead box to appear as a plain text link, a button or a clickable image. When your visitors click on a text link, image or a button, the lead boxes will be triggered. Let's say I'm going to include a plain text link in my blog post. I'm going to edit the text display to download my ebook. And whenever you choose, you'll see the preview over here to the right. Your publishing code is always generated right at the bottom. Once you are done with your configuration, then click Save Changes. Let's say I want to put a button in my blog post. Click on Button. You can customize the background color and text color of your Call to Action button. The HTML code will be automatically generated as well. Click Save Changes. You can also insert an image in your blog post to trigger the lead box. Select the image from your image bank. The HTML code will be automatically generated as well. Now I'm going to show you how to publish this in your WordPress blog post. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to use the plain text link to trigger the lead box. Key in your desired display text. Click Save Changes. You will need to copy the HTML code to paste it into your WordPress post later. Log into WordPress. At the dashboard, click Post, All Post, select the post that you want to insert your lead box. Then paste this HTML code where you'd like your text link to appear. Click Preview Changes. Scroll down to the bottom of the page. When you click the text link, the lead box will be triggered. You can publish your lead boxes to any blog post or other web pages to collect opt-ins and grow your audience. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to publish your lead page to your Facebook page. Lead pages can be published to your Facebook page as a tab, allowing you to grow your mailing list right within Facebook. Take note that this only works on Facebook pages. After editing and saving your load pages, select the page you want to publish in your Facebook page. Go to the drop-down menu on the right, click Publish Options. Click on Other Publishing Options and select Add to Facebook button. You will be prompted to select your Facebook page from the drop-down menu. Select the Facebook page you'd like to publish to and click Add Page tab. That's it, your lead page has now been added to your Facebook page. Now go to Manage tab. You can change the order of the tab by dragging the tab to the top. Click Save. To change the name of the tab, go to Settings, go to Apps, click on Edit Settings. Rename it to something that makes more sense to the users. Click Save and OK. To delete lead page from your Facebook page, go to Edit Setting, click Remove to delete the lead page. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to do A-B testing in lead pages. A-B testing is how you compare two versions of a landing page to see which one performs better. There are two ways to create a split test. Click the menu button next to the page you want to use and select Create Split Test. You can also turn an existing lead page into an A-B split test by clicking the A-B test button in the standard builder. I'll be demonstrating how you can split test two landing pages, landing page A versus landing page B. On the landing page that you have created, click on the A-B test button. It will ask you what would you like to use as your starting point as your new variation. You can create new variations that are based on the original lead page, based on another lead page, or based on a template. I would like to use the original, which is the page that I created. Once you've chosen the base for your new variation, press the blue Done button to begin working on it. Now you have made an exact duplicate of your landing page. This is the variance page and it will be shown here as AB Test Variation 1. You can also add another variation to test on landing page C if you want by clicking Add a New Variation. From here, you can decide which element you want to test out and make the changes on the page. Maybe you want to test the color of the button. 
the copy of the headline, or the product image. For demonstration purposes, I'll change the image of the product. You can choose the image from your media library or upload a new image. Then, click Save. You can now view the two variations of your landing pages. One is the original, and the other is the variation one. When you hit Publish, you will see a link. Now you can share this link to your subscribers or anywhere you want. Any traffic you drive to your page will be split evenly. Half will be in landing page A and half will be in landing page B. Then click Done. When you set up a form in your page or lead box, you'll need to decide where you want your visitors' information to end up. You can send your opt-in data to your email service provider, webinar service, or CRM software. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to connect your email service provider to your lead pages account. So your subscribers that are captured through lead pages are added directly to your email services account. To begin, first navigate to My Account, click on Integrations. You will be brought to a page with a list of email service providers such as MailChimp, AWeber, GetResponse, and many more. Click on the service that you want to integrate with. It will prompt you either to enter the API key or your account credentials. If you are using MailChimp, you will need to obtain a MailChimp API token from your MailChimp account. Paste the API token and click the Connect button. Or if you are using GetResponse, you will need to obtain your API key from your GetResponse account as well. For demonstration purposes, I'll be showing you how to integrate AWeber Autoresponder to your lead pages account. Select AWeber from the list of email service providers. Click on the Connect button. Then you will be prompted to a page to enter your AWeber credentials. Click on the Allow Access button. Confirm that your lead pages is connected with your AWeber account. Next, I will guide you through how to connect your AWeber list to a specific lead page. Before you begin in lead pages, you must create a list and a basic, unformatted form in your AWeber account. As you can see, I've built my landing pages with both the drag and drop builder and standard template. I'll show you the integration in the standard template first, and followed by the drag and drop template. Step 1. Navigate to the lead page you want to integrate with AWeber and click the Edit icon. Step 2. Click the Call to Action button in your page editor to edit your opt-in information. Step 3. Hover your mouse to the integration settings. Step 4. Select AWeber account that you want to integrate with lead pages from the drop-down menu. Step 5. Select your list from the drop-down menus. Step 6. Once you're done editing, click OK and then Save to save your changes. You are now integrated with AWeber and your lead page is ready to start gathering opt-ins. Now let's move on to learn how to integrate your AWeber autoresponder to your drag and drop lead pages. First, select that page and click on the Edit icon. Click on any form widget on your page or in a lead box to access its settings. Click on Edit the Lead Box. Hover your mouse and click on your Call to Action button. By default, your form will be integrated with Lead Notifications, which is Lead Pages' email notification system for leads. Click the Add and Integration option to configure your first service. Click More Services to access other integration options as shown on the screen. Simply click on the service you'd like to integrate with you'll be prompted to enter your account credentials. Once it is done, click on Allow Access. Once you've connected to an integration in the Drag and Drop Builder, it'll be available for any subsequent forms you create and there is no need to connect again. You can also choose which email list you want to integrate to from the drop-down menu. Go back to the integration setting to edit your form, click on the name of your email service provider. Select the list from the drop-down menu. Click Done. Save the changes. And finally, update your landing page.
What if you already have a website hosting? If you have your website or hosting already, Lead Pages fits right into that as well. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install Lead Pages WordPress plugin in your WordPress site. Once you set up your lead page, choose the page you want to publish. Click on Publish Options. Click on Preview and Publish Lead Page. Click on Publish on the right-hand corner of your lead page. Click on Publish Options and Other Publish Options. Choose the tab that says Publish to a WordPress site. Lead Pages provides a free customized Lead Pages WordPress Connector plugin, which you can use to host your lead page on your WordPress website, where you assign your own page name. Click on Get the Plugin. The plugin will download in your workstation. Log into your WordPress dashboard and choose Plugins, then hover your mouse to Add New. Upload the plugin, choose the zip file you downloaded, and click Install Now. Once it's installed, it will say Plugin Installed Successfully. Click on Activate Plugin. You should now see a lead pages in your WordPress dashboard's sidebar. Click on Add New. Now it's going to ask you to configure your lead page. Choose which lead page you want it to display. Customize your URL with your hosting name and page name. Click Publish. You can now view your landing page, your landing pages with your new customized URL. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to edit the template by changing the content and settings of the page sections, layouts, and widgets in the Drop and Drag Builder. First, I'm going to choose a landing page template. I'm going to use the simple landing page template. And we will give our page a title before diving in. I'm going to name this page Demo2. What I first see is the default landing page. To begin, I'm going to delete a few items that I'm not interested in having in my landing page like the additional text blocks, additional spaces, images, that are not serving the purposes of my landing page. Changes that you make are automatically saved every 20 seconds. Once those are gone, I'm going to simply drag from right to left to resize my landing page logo. I'll also add a button in my header to name it Get Started. I'll add a spacer to the left. Tweak the size of the text and background color until I'm fully happy with it. Moving on, you can edit the text in the header and subheader using your own copies, altering the text sizes, and use the color selector to change the text color to suit your theme. You can also add video to your landing page by embedding the video code here. Well, on second thought, I think I need to add another section to the page. So I'll click on the plus button to expand the blank area on my page. I want to add one more image and one more block of text. I'm expanding the widget section and just drag the element I want to include in the section into my page. You can have your image position at the top left center or right side. I'll also tweak what I wanted to say here at the text block and adjust the text size. Next, I'm going to insert an image from my media file, or you can upload a new image from your computer. I'm also going to add spacers to both sides of my call to action button to change its size and location.
I'll do one final tweak to my button copy. Change the text and background color of the button until it fully fits my liking. I'm getting down to the footer of my head page now. You can edit the legal text. The final step is to add the lead box to make sure that it matches my design. I'll add my progress bar to 75% instead of 50%. Then I'll add an additional field for visitors to enter their first name. I'll edit the email field by adding the text enter your best email address in the placeholder just to add a little instruction to my visitors. Then I'll move the first name field just above the email address field in the form. Click the save button to save your opt-in form. There, the design of my page is done, and I'm loving how it's looking so far. You can preview the page and publish it when you're ready. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to create a lead page so you can start building your email list. First, click on Template and you'll be brought back to the Template Selector. You may notice the box labeled Highest Converting. The box sorts the average conversion rate across all lead page customers. When you check this box, it will sort from the pages that are converting the highest to the pages that are converting the lowest. Let's take a look at the categories of the templates. Lead Pages categorizes these templates by Thank You Pages, Opt-in Pages, Sales Pages, Webinar Pages, etc. For example, let's say you have a flower arrangement program that you want to sell to your customers and you want to start building your list with an opt-in page where you give away a free guidelines in exchange of the email address. Select the opt-in template. Check the highest converting box to sort out the highest converting page to the lowest converting page. The pages at the top of the list are those that will perform well. So I chose the basic opt-in template. As you can see, it's really simple with a picture, a header, and an opt-in box. Click on Use this template and you'll be directed to a template editor. All you have to do is click on them to customize things. Lead Pages by default supports both the desktop responsive design as well as your tablet and handphone design. It is built so you do not need to do anything with that. First thing you will need to do is give your page a name. The name you key in the box here is only going to be seen by you, so I'm going to call this Flower Gift. The next box you will see is your URL. The first part of the URL is set by you when you created your account. The next part of the URL you can change it to whatever you wish. In this SEO tags box is where you're going to key in the page title, page description and the keyword meta tags. The page title and the page description is what will appear in the Google search results. Tracking Codes gives you the ability to insert third-party analytics tracking on your pages, such as Google Analytics. Exit Pop-Up is when you try to navigate away from the page and there is a pop-up message to ask you, wait a second, don't leave. However, this is optional. Click on the Done button. Alright, you've created a page and next we will learn how to add content to your page. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Lead Magnet Delivery. Log into your Lead Pages account and click on the drop down beside your name at the top right. Select Lead Magnet Delivery. 
Click on Upload New File and upload the file that you want to offer as a lead magnet. In this case, I have created a PDF file. Lead Pages can handle the delivery of the lead magnet or you can create a customized email to be sent out. The choice is yours. Fill out the required fields such as your message to your subscriber, sender name, and sender email address. Click Save. Go to your lead box. Select Lead Box. All you need to configure here is switching on the option that says Send an email after someone opts in on this lead box. Select the lead magnet. Lead Pages can handle the delivery of your lead magnet or you can create a customized email to be sent out with the lead magnet download link. The lead magnet will be attached to the email and sent to your subscribers. Lead Pages allow you to collect email addresses, sell your product and services, get people to register for your seminars and more. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can add content and edit your page using the standard template Let's take a look at the standard builder and choose a basic opt-in template. What we have for the page here is obviously the background, product image, headline text of the offer, and of course the call to action button. First thing I gotta do is to change the background color. I'm gonna choose light blue as the background color. Then I'm gonna change the product image. A lot of people like to use the 3D book cover. It's also popular to use a video or a 2D image. This can be tested with the A-B testing to see which works best for you. Click the image icon. Some of the images in the media file show up or you can upload your own preferred product image. Moving forward, you can hide and show certain elements on the page by clicking the on and off icon at the content tab. For example, I want to hide the header on the top of the page. I can click this little icon to hide the header. Let's say I feel the clicking link below the opt-in button is sort of redundant in the page, so I'm going to hide the text below button. To edit the copies in the header and subheader, simply click on the text blocks to edit the text. Now you can customize the submit button. You can also edit the opt-in box change the button background color, check and uncheck the required field in the form such as email address, first name, last name, phone number, and address, and finally click OK. So this is a very basic landing page using the standard template. You can save preview and publish your page when you're ready. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to render video from Video Maker FX. Once everything's properly aligned, click on Export Project to create the output of your project slides. There are lots of video sizes. I'm going to choose the maximum size, which is 1280 times 720 HD format. You can select the quality according to your requirement. Most of the times, very good and excellent works great because in case if your system is low on resources, selecting perfect can sometimes hang up your system. After that, you need to browse the location you want to choose. And then your project name. Save into the location you want and name your project name. The final video will be created in MP4 format. Click on Start Video Export to export your video. Hi, in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add audio to video using Video Maker FX. After adding all your required slides, just click on Audio Settings present on the top, which brings you the necessary controls required. It'll pop up an Audio Settings window. There are two different tracks. One is music and the other is voiceover. Make sure to enable music track and voice track so you can edit the setting. You can add the default tracks provided into music track. There's lots of music in the folder and you can choose whatever songs you like and then press the play button to listen. Adjust the audio volume if you need to. Or you can add your own voice over to the videos. After you choose, press Apply button, go to Preview Project and preview it. 
Hi, in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to edit animation using Video Maker FX. After you add the slide into your video timeline, you need to click on the slide that you want to edit the animation. So I'm going to choose slide 1 to edit the animation. Once you've selected the slide you want, just go to the right panel and select the animation button just to the right of the shape button. Animation 1 is the animated background effect. Just a few clicks and you can have an animated background effect apply in your slide instantly. You can choose whatever animated background effect that you want and then just click up and down. And Animation 2 is a call to action arrows. You can choose the arrows you like to apply in your slide as well. Hi, in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to add slides in Video Maker FX. First, you'll need to launch Video Maker FX by logging in with the same username and password you use to log in. Create a new project, then give your project a name. Click on Add Slides button. You can see a sample of the different types of slide themes available. As you can see, I am selecting the character Anna Slide 1 theme. So once you select a slide theme and click on Add Slide, it gets added to your video timeline. Here's how the character Anna Slide 1 theme looks. Hi there, in this video I'll show you how to piece everything together in Sony Vegas Pro. Now this video is made with the assumption that you completed the recording and narration for your video sales letter and you've done all the graphics and the images required using PowerPoint. So first off, what you want to do is import in your media and for this example I've imported in all the required media to do an example for you. How you want to import media is you go to File and you select Import and Media. Next, you want to add a video and audio track and it's very simple. All you need to do is right click in this area here, Insert Video Track and right click and Insert Audio Track. Next, you want to drag the audio and all the images. So you just take the audio and drag it there. And drag the image into the video timeline. So now you've loaded the PowerPoint slides that you did earlier in the previous tutorial and you've loaded it all here in the video track and the narration in the audio track. Your next step is to play the video and as it plays you just need to align and sync the images to the audio that's being played. And as we see here there's quite a bit of syncing to do because there's a gap over here. And if you want to adjust how long each of the slides appear you just need to select the slide and drag it around. Or you can also extend the slide. So now let's go ahead and sync the video to the audio. And now that I've synced the slides to the audio, all that's left is to render the video. And the last step is pretty simple. All you need to do is go to File and select Render As and click Render and a pop-up will come up with a lot of different output options for you to select from. And there you have it, a step-by-step -step guide on how to create your sales video. Thanks! Hi there, in this video I'll show you how to do a narration or a voiceover using Camtasia. In the main interface, click on Edit, go to Voice Narration and you'll be brought to the Voice Narration interface. Before you do any recording, do click on Audio Setup Wizard. And ensure that there is a recording source, which is your microphone. And to know whether your microphone is working, the input level will indicate that your voice is being recorded. Before you proceed further, select Audio Format and choose the intended output format that you want to output as. When you're ready, click Finish. 
And this video is created with the assumption that you have created your video sales letter and you have a ready script in front of you that you just need to narrate and read through. When you are ready, click Start Recording and when you are done, click Stop Recording and you will be prompted to save the file. And it's that simple, a video that shows you how to easily do a voice recording using Camtasia Studio. Hi there, in this video I'll be showing you how to create a video sales letter using PowerPoint. It's very, very easy to follow the video. The video size that you're going to output is in 1280 by 720 pixels, and converting it to centimeters is 33.87 by 1905 centimeters. There are three main requirements before we begin. First, this video is made with the assumption that you've already created your video sales letter script, and in the script you've planned out your headline, body, and copy. The next requirement is PowerPoint. And the third requirement is creativity. Don't be fooled by the simplicity of PowerPoint. Some of the best video sales letters are very, very simple. So let's begin. I like to keep things simple, so my PowerPoint slides will be a white background. I've already written one part of a simple video sales letter and have decided what are the texts that I want to put into my PowerPoint slides. Before we begin, we need to configure the PowerPoint slides to follow the video size output. To do that, go to the top of the tab, go to Design, then go to Page Setup. There'll be a pop-up where you can configure the width and height according to the video size output. Let's input in the correct video size. I'm doing it in centimeters. Next, we'll start to copy and paste the text into individual slides. To start, let's select the headline, highlight it and copy it. As a shortcut, it's Control c As a shortcut, in the left column, let's create a new slide. And then go up and click Insert. Put in a text box and draw the text box and paste the headline or control V. And this is your headline. Select the headline or control A, change the font to Myriad Pro and make the font bigger. Then go to the tab, select Format, and align the text to center. Go back to the Home tab and select Center to align the text, and let's customize the layout of the headline to make it nicer. Next, copy and paste the rest of the text into the slides. All you need to do is copy the current slide, paste a new slide, then go to the previous slide, copy the text, highlight the text, and paste it or control V. When you've pasted it, customize the text to match it with the previous one. 
Repeat the same for the rest of the slides. A shortcut which you can use is when you paste a new text into the slide, there will be a small little icon, Paste Options. Click on it and select Keep Text Only and then it will automatically match the previous text configuration. Let's do it for the other text. When you're done, save every slide as a JPEG. To do that, click on the PowerPoint button on the top left, select Save As, and from the list of options in Save As Type, select JPEG and click Save and Choose Every Slide. And then you're done! In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to secure your WordPress site. We're going to cover one of the best WordPress security plugins that can help reduce the risk of your website being hacked. The name of the plugin is All in One WP Security and Firewall. It's also among the most popular WordPress security plugins. To install the plugin, go to Plugin on your WordPress dashboard, Add New. At the search bar, search for All-in-One WP Security. Click Install Now. Click Activate. Now you can see that it's successfully installed in your WordPress. On your left of your WordPress dashboard, WP Security is shown there. It has a user-friendly interface for those who are not familiar with advanced security settings. The Security Strength Meter measures how well you are protecting your site based on the security features you've activated. The Security and Firewall features are categorized as Basic, Intermediate, or Advanced. Let's click on User Account. You can see that the User Account is labeled as Basic. Basic category is generally non-invasive and will not break any functionality of your site. Let's look at User Login. It's also labeled as Basic Security. These types of basic features should be activated immediately in order to provide you with the minimum security you should be applying to your site. You can adjust the setting of your site, Basic Security, by checking certain security elements. If you set the maximum login attempt to 5 before the IP address is locked out, you can also adjust the login retry time period over here. Let's move to the database security. It's labeled as intermediate. Take note that these features fall under the intermediate and advanced categories can break certain functionality depending on your setup and which plugins you're using. These types of features usually apply more complex security measures. Now let's go back to the dashboard. The dashboard will highlight the most important features which you should apply to your site to achieve a minimal effective level of security. These are displayed in the panel which shows whether they are currently active or not. 
In this tutorial, we'll show you how to disable the search feature in WordPress. You can use a WordPress plugin called Disable Search. Go to Plugin, Add New, At the search bar, key in Disable Search Plugin. Install the Disable Search Plugin from WordPress Plugin Repository. Activate the plugin and it should disable the built in front end search capabilities of your WordPress blog. Your plugin is successfully installed in your WordPress. In this tutorial, I will show you how to disable WordPress Autosave by using a plugin called WordPress Revisions Control. To install the plugin, go to Plugin on your WordPress dashboard, Add New. At the search bar, search for WP Revisions Control. Click Install Now. Click Activate. Go to Installed Plugin. Now you can see that it is successfully installed in your WordPress. WP Revisions Control also allows users to control how many revisions are stored for each supported post type. Click Revisions and you can limit the number of revisions in Post, in Pages, and in Portfolio. Once you're done, click Save Changes.